Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sneaking in one more Christmas project. I'm gonna be showing you how these Christmas trees got built and then I'm gonna finish them off with a little bit of stain and wax. So if you wanna see how I got this look, just keep watching. This video is gonna be a lot of fun for me today because this is my first ever YouTube collaboration. I am partnering today with Steph and Vicki from Mother Daughter Projects over at DIY Homeowners. I found these really cool rustic Christmas trees on the Pottery Barn website at the beginning of the season. In fact, they're so popular that they are sold out and I don't know if they're ever coming back. But back then they were priced at $240 and I took a look at these and knowing Steph and Vicki and all the building skills that they have and the tools that they have, I thought they might be able to build these for less. So I put them to the challenge and they have a video explaining how to build these Christmas trees. So I will put that in the description box below and you guys can check that out before you watch the rest of this video or after you finish this one. All the products they used to build the trees and everything I'm using to finish them off today was all bought at Home Depot, so you can do one-stop shopping for this project. We meant to have these videos up last week, but our trees actually got lost in the mail for a whole week, but I was really excited when they actually showed up. And I'm gonna be opening them for the first time right here in front of you guys so you can see my reaction. So let's go ahead and dig into this box and see what Steph and Vicki made for me. These look, these are awesome. Look at this, they look almost identical to the Pottery Barn. Oh my gosh, the detailing in this, this is awesome. They actually made these really easy to ship and store by putting a removable base on them. Oh my gosh, there's a card in here you guys and a copy of Steph's book. Oh, I'm gonna cry right now. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't wait to read this. I didn't even know she was gonna include this in here. This is just her story, um, her life story of dealing with mental health and some traumatic things that happened in her life. Um, I feel really touched that she shared this with me, you guys. I'm gonna link this below in the description um, just in case you wanna check out her book and you're interested in learning more about Steph and her journey. So sweet, and she sent me a magnet and a little sticker for Mother Daughter Projects and just a sweet note and some extra bolts and some extra pieces in case anything was broken or missing, but everything looks intact to me. So I'm gonna go ahead, put everything together, grab all my materials, zoom you in, and we're gonna finish off these Christmas trees. The first thing I'm doing is just setting out the trees and I'm taking apart the bases so that I can stain those as well. And I set aside the hardware so that I would not lose it. The first stain I tried out was this Verithane Classic Wood Stain in Weathered Oak. I was pretty happy with the color going on, but it was just not dark enough. And then when it dried, it actually hardly looked like it made a difference. So I went back to the store and I got this Triple Strength Premium Wood Stain in Weathered Gray. I've worked with this before, so I knew it was going to have a lot more pigment than that Classic Stain. And the first thing that I did was to test it out on the back to make sure I liked it. So what you're going to do is just grab your can, open it, and stir it up really good just to evenly distribute all the pigment that's in there. I also grabbed my nitrile gloves to protect my hands and then my favorite Intex multi-purpose rag from Home Depot. I'm starting with the smaller tree, dipping that rag directly into the stain and then blotting it out a little bit. Like I said, this is really pigmented, so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't putting on too much because you can't dial it back once you put too much on. As I'm applying this, I am going with the grain, dipping back in for more stain when I need it and blotting it out on that cloth. Like I did the back, I also need to do the sides as well to make sure that they are stained. And now onto the other side of the tree. Once I got all the stain put down on the tree, I just found a clean spot on my cloth and just wiped back any of the excess stain that was still on the tree. I also finished off the bottom just because I wasn't sure how much was going to show once I put the stands on. 
Now I'm gonna grab my other tree and again I started on the back just to get the hang of it because this one is shaped a little differently and it has more detail than the smaller one. So it just gave me a little practice run doing the back because no one's really gonna see the back but you do still need to have it finished off if you're gonna place it on a mantle or something. So my technique is exactly the same. I'm just putting on that stain, dipping into that can and blotting it out as I go. Something that was different about the bigger trees is that they had this little section of detail in between the slats. I wasn't able to push enough stain in there just using my rag. So I grabbed a just little cheap paintbrush that I had laying around to fill in those gaps. So now that we've got the hang of this, let's speed it up and get this tree done. And just like on that other one, don't forget to get your sides. And that little paintbrush helped get into the corners on the sides as well. Okay, now that the trees are done, I need to stain my bases as well. I just stained them all the way around um, just in case you could see any part of it when the tree was put together. And this stain dries pretty quickly within an hour. Just make sure it's not sticky or tacky before you move on to your next step. I am going to distress my trees a little bit. I'm starting with a wire brush and just rubbing this in the direction of the grain. It just adds a little bit more depth and texture. I'm also going to take a hammer and just lightly tap that around to put some nicks in it. And another thing I like to do to distress pieces is take a little nail and dot that in there and make little wormholes. Then I grabbed a paper towel and just wiped up any dust that I created distressing. To seal my piece, I'm gonna be using the Bare Decorative Wax in white. I am applying it with one of those Intex cloths, the same cloths that I used to add the stain. This is my first time working with this wax and it is super soft compared to what I'm used to working with. I thought it was gonna really collect and pick up the spots that I distressed, but I actually just created a really soft whitewashed effect and I liked the way that it was looking, so I just went with it. Since this wax is so soft, it just really easily wiped into the piece and kind of just melted into it and gave it a beautiful whitewashed effect. Once I got all the wax on, I wiped them down with a clean cloth and then I finished off the bases as well. So now it's time to put these trees together. I'm putting on the bases and screwing them shut. Having these removable bases was really a great feature for shipping these, but it's also gonna be great for storage in case I need to lay them completely flat. So here are our finished Christmas trees. I am really proud of how me and Mother Daughter Projects worked together to create this dupe. I think it looks beautiful. And we did ours for around $65 in materials compared to the $240 for the inspiration. Of course, you do need some power tools. So go check out DIY for Homeowners with Mother Daughter Projects because they're gonna show you how to use all those tools and which ones to buy. I had so much fun collabing with Steph and Vicki today. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I will see you next time and Merry Christmas.